They came from the old world with new ideas Looking for a clean place to write their names They stepped off the boat and out of that box long before their time But they brought along some good old-fashioned ways I can't remember for sure how many uh, years I've been doing baskets, probably, you know, since about 80, so whatever, about 30-some years, and uh, I learned from several people, several styles. I've taken a lot of baskets apart, seen how they were done. I've never taken an official class, but over the years I've kind of developed my own, my own style, and it's nothing unique, but uh, what I do think is unique is that I've gotten pretty good at knowing all the local roots which work, which don't work, how to gather them, how to preserve them, how to re-wet them. Uh, you just kind of what you can do, what you can do with the root and, and where you find them because that's the most important part. And then other, other fibers that, uh, other fibers that work, not just roots, but uh, cottonwood, uh, cottonwood bark fiber. There's a, uh, willow willow bark so you have a willow root and you just scrape the bark off the willow root now this is the bark from a willow root and you can uh, you can make little cords out of it uh, this was a tail I made for for a little critter kind of like a tail was coming out so so that's uh, grass roots they're just all different kinds of stuff you can use Anything you find. I mean, you can find uh, this is uh, this is brown bear hair. You know, I I basically incorporated everything. Uh, you just start you just start spinning. Now I might have a round of brown bear hair, and then I might have a round of willow root. So it's just to me the coolest part of doing these kind of baskets is just incorporating any kind of nature into your baskets. So you enjoy the wilderness, you enjoy nature, you gather stuff while you're out there, you kind of learn about it, then you take it home and you make a, a piece of artwork. And to me that's about as good as it gets. Now many a foreign language rolled off my daddy's tongue. A pioneer politician would be his fame. And my mama left the opera house and her cultured life behind. But they brought along some good old-fashioned ways. Now you got a now you got a peeled root as opposed to an unpeeled root, and then this bark is what you can then take and actually twist and make uh, make something like this out of the bark. So the actual mechanics of of doing a basket is pretty much in and out, over and under. You got to figure out how to start them. But after that, it's just kind of round and round, up and down, in and out. But the real art, I suppose, is from choosing your materials, knowing how to gather them, knowing what, what kind of material you can use, and how to uh, spin it and ply it and make cords out of it. So you can, uh, you know, then how you, how you decorate a basket. Uh, you know, this basket is adorned with uh, beaver buttons. Just, uh, just the end of... Uh, just the end of beaver sticks. Just like a beaver chewed this, it's the same he chewed all of those. And so, make little buttons on this. This one here is pretty much an example of a lot of different kind of very fine grass roots and bark. So this, I really try to make this whole basket pretty much out of very fine fibers that I spun, plied sometimes four times to make a cord big enough. And these are just tiny little grass roots, almost like threads. So. So like I said, the art is in just kind of choosing your material and deciding what you want to do or, you know, incorporating things like, uh, you know, bear teeth. These are horse teeth actually that I've uh, shaped to give it this shape. Uh, horse hoofs, just incorporating a, a, as much nature as you can to, to, make, uh, to make art and to somehow have nature live on, preserve preserve, tell a story. It was a little box and it was labeled strings too short to use. <laughs> and so here they are, grandpa's dead, they're going through his stuff. 
box. String's too short to use. So she and I went on a pack trip and we used string to tie everything on the horses. When we got back, I cut all the string off and I made her this basket. Uh, stuff we found along the way, claws and teeth, and uh, I took these little strings too short to use and I wove them into the basket. So it's kind of a kind of a cool little uh, cool little thing. They had eight creative children in the Alaska wilderness. And they gave them all eight unusual names. And they let them run wild in the northern woods just to see what they'd become. You gotta love those good old fashioned ways. And they named me Atila Kuno. I'm old fashioned through and through. I try to shoot straight and keep my word and I expect the same from you. Yes, I do. I can wrap my simple brain around those good old fashioned ways Where you say what you mean and you mean what you say Say what you mean and mean what you say They came from the old world with new ideas Looking for a clean place to write their name they stepped off that boat and out of the box long before their time. They brought along some good old fashioned ways. Brought along some good old fashioned ways. You gotta love those good old fashioned ways. And that's as concise as I've ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want more, you're going to have to go to my web page.